Hello and welcome, dear viewer, to this announcement video for my album Peace, Love and Gender Queerness, which I will from now on abbreviate as Plug. This album has been over a year in the making. Uh, it contains my very first track and it also contains some of my latest tracks. Uh, some of those tracks you've already seen on the internet, some you haven't. A couple of things I want to get into in this video. Um, so let's start with the first things. What about the names? Well, I don't think names are that important, especially for songs that don't have any vocals where I could like pick an important vocal line and just put them in there. Um, that applies to most of the songs here because except for some um, speech samples and some of them, um, they don't contain any vocals. So the names are just whatever came to my mind at some point um, or related to how the track was made and the entire album title is just whatever. I just came up with that at one point and I just thought, oh yeah, cool, I'll just use that. There's three categories of songs in my opinion. The first one are like the actual main songs and this is what you probably want to be listening to. Um, if, if you just care about like like my main music stuff. Then there is all of the um, lo-fi stuff. Uh, those are a little bit less effort than the other ones, or some of them are. You can put them in your lo-fi playlist or whatever. And then finally there's a couple of songs that are extra stuff um, from the other songs. The very first song, we'll uh, do this one by one, is Sinking Meditation. Sinking Meditation, I've already shown off in a video. I've talked at length in that video for like half an hour about the song um, and how it works and so on. So I will just refer you to that one. It's um, a generic trance song. I don't know. Um, I think it's the first proper trance song I made. The second song is aptly titled This is a Test LOL. Um, this song is the first track I ever made in Ableton um, and it came about basically when I installed the trial version and, and played around with stuff. That's also why the project is called This is a Test LOL. Um, in, in the project name it's in all caps but I decided that the song title wouldn't be screaming at you so it's not screaming at you. Um, basically it's just throwing a bunch of stuff together that I found interesting, trying out some synths and um, doing whatever I wanted. It's also like much more experimental in terms of um, melody and harmony in comparison to the other ones. Um, it also has very bad drops in my opinion, but I really don't want to um, mess with it anymore. It just is how it is and I still think it deserves uh, to be put out there. Um, so in terms of like things you might have noticed, there is a couple of samples in there. Um, these vocal samples here are just uh, stock samples from Ableton. Um, there is a bunch of stock samples in a lot of the uh, songs, although most of them, except for this one actually, I've um, edited heavily. This one is unedited, I think, except for pitch shifting. Um, and then there's this one, which you can see is heavily edited. Um, this is from a kind of famous or well-known um, meme video. Yeah, so I, I sampled that. I sampled some of their um, some of their uh, speaking in that video. I didn't actually sample the music itself. And then we have percussion sounds here, uh, which are basically just hit sounds or punch sounds. Um, perk, body and voice, whatever. Um, yeah, it's it's a punch sound. It kind of sounds like the um, the, the punch sound uh, from Karate Man uh, from the Rhythm Game series. Um, yeah, and then there's some impacts here. Uh, so that's basically all, all there is to this. Um, there's like this A section and then there's a B section um, where we go to a new chord progression and some new melody. Then we go back to the original um, and that's essentially it. And there's some uh, new fancy uh, melody at the end. Yeah, so this is definitely the most varied song. I've, I've mostly done these very repetitive songs apart from this. 
The next song is Circular, or more specifically, it's my remix of Circular. The original song is by Katharin Kult, um, who is a very nice ambient artist. Um, and I, I heard this song in uh, Andreas's, Andreas Kling's um, intros to his Serenity OS hacking video. You probably already know Andreas Kling. If not, I'll definitely have his channel and, of course, the original circular um, uh, video um, in the description. So I heard this song. I thought it would work really nice as this kind of dance trance thing. Um, so I asked uh, Katalin if I could remix it and I think it came out extremely well. Um, you can see up here, those are the original stems. Um, I, I basically took mostly the... Uh, this is the master that's disabled. Um, I took mostly her thing as the intro and then transitioned into my adaptation. Um, I think I sped the song up quite a bit. Um, and then like this intermediate section, there's like a keyboard solo in here. I, I actually played that in real time um, on the keyboard physically and decided it was so good. I was, wasn't doing a second take. So this is like one take solo, like real solo, I guess. Whatever you want to call it, real solo. Anyways, uh, that's where the song kind of drops out and then we get some of it back in here where the uh, drums uh, drop out and then we get this big B section with fat piano um, and the C section or whatever we go back to like an A section which is very similar to what we have in the beginning um, and there's like I think hers her stuff is like the original is much louder in here so I basically took the original and put some drums over it um, and adapted the harmony and, and just just added to it but kept the same bass because I think it's a really nice song and I think it works very well and she also really liked um, what I did so I was ha very happy about that um, and I'm gonna put it um, on my album as well. So the next song is Late Night Campus. Um, you might recognize this song from my video that I did on earlier Aquarius uh, trilogy stuff. Um, basically the reason it's called Late Night Campus, Late Night is for the lo-fi stuff, it's the first lo-fi song of the album, um, and the campus is because uh, I was filming um, on my university campus for the video, um, and I put like a, a bunch of the b-roll from the university behind this um, uh, behind this song and um, so it's like they're kind of connected so I called it um, Late Night Campus. Uh, so as I mentioned it's the first lo-fi song um, of the album and um, it's also probably my favorite and it's basically the exact same thing throughout um, as you might um, see. Like most of these synths are just taking uh, the main synth, I think, yeah, this, like this main uh, melody line, whatever, not not melody, but it's chords, uh, taking those. It's basically the same thing throughout, some like w wonky drums, uh, some background noise, some vinyl uh, distortion uh, that I turned off for the for this recording because it was too annoying in the project. Um, yeah, so... I think this is a a pretty nice um, little uh, lo-fi track. There's some other ones that have more going on, but this is like very, very basic. So the next song, Flea, brings us back to like the not really high energy, but like, like the deep and also kind of dark part, um, which of course is intentional. I, there is some intention, there is not much, but there's some intention behind um, how the songs are structured. So Flea is a song that you have most definitely not heard before. Um, I think I've never even really talked about it that much. So Flea started out originally a couple of years ago as just this basic um, this basic chord line, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And that's 
and that sort of thing uh, repeated over and over again. And basically what I did is I thought it was so dramatic, it needed a lot of strings, it has some flute synths, um, it has pizzicato strings, um, it has some, some background synths, but it's mostly sounds that are supposed to be realistic. That also goes for the drums. Um, which are really aggressive, of course, um, which I thought worked very nicely. As you can see, it's like uh, five different drum kits layered on top of each other. Um, and yeah, and also down here, I have like one other stock sample. It's like some kind of, yeah, boat, semi, hollow, baritone, uh, whatever thing. Um, is it? double bass or whatever uh, at least it's like a recording of a real instrument so it it adds to the vibe i hope um but what i think is, is quite interesting if you consider um just this part or like even even this kind of part but if you just uh, consider this part i'm gonna let you listen to it briefly I mean, it's it's a pretty basic rock um, beat, but that's intentional. It's like this very basic, but ba basic but very punchy. Um, <clears throat> if I think this would actually work pretty nicely as like a hip hop beat, uh, I'm not really into hip hop. Um, I don't know anyone who could like rap for me or whatever or that could like write a song on top of this. But <laughs> I don't know. Just maybe if you're interested. Um, uh, just uh, ask and I could uh, make you a beat out of this or like like a proper hip-hop beat out of this I think it could work very nicely everything else is much too dramatic and has too much melody but I think this just works very nice for an aggressive hip-hop hip um, beat you know so that's the only other thought I have on this apart from that it's like I don't know what genre but it's I think it it worked out uh, really well the entire song the next song, and now we're getting really dark and deep into things, um, is Paranoid Darkness. This is actually the last song I finished. I finished this at the t time of recording um, just yesterday. And it's basically um, the reason that I decided to finish, uh, uh, finish the album, because this just, <laughs> I just randomly came up with this. It was like really spontaneous um, and I decided okay well this album has a lot of similar things on it so I'm just gonna finish it now and make another album for all of the other music uh, that I have in store. So Paranoid Darkness is another trance song um, so we're getting back to where the album started but it's a much darker tone in my opinion. Um, I don't like it as much as Sinking Meditation, but it's also really nice because you can see all of these samples down here. Um, I'm sampling Andreas's um, drug talk, I'm calling it. Uh, it's the car talk, what drugs did I use? I'll definitely link it, link it in the description. Basically, that's the video where he talks uh, in depth about his journey with drugs and which drugs he used specifically. Um, it's like an incredible video. I think it's the most important and the most impactful video he has ever made. Um, and I wanted to represent that with this song. Um, this idea came about like when I was half done with the song. Um, I also asked him and he was uh, very kindly allowed me um, to use his uh, voice snippets in here. Um, and yeah, so I'm sampling him in a bunch of places. There's this one place in the beginning where I basically compiled all of his saying the various drugs together and I think it it hits uh, really hard, even as me as someone who has basically never taken drugs. Um, I think it, it's it's yeah, it it's just incredibly powerful. And I hope that the song d does it justice. I, I do think so personally, but you have to decide that. Um, I also um, really like how the drums turned out or like the drum grooves turned out on this one uh, as you might know i'm like 
I'm I'm supposed to be a drummer, so I'm supposed to care a lot about uh, about uh, drum stuff. Um, so <laughs> uh, I I really went into things here and and figured out some really um, cool drum beats that still kind of fit with the techno vibe that we are generally going for here. And also, this one has probably my favorite drops even though it's supposed to be a progressive or, or trance track uh, yeah so anyways uh, this is also a song you can listen to so now we end the uh, section of the song that is kind of trancey or um, progressive whatever you want to call it um, and I finish things up uh, with a couple of um, sort of video game kind of songs so the idea for power advance which is the first of these um is pretty old also i have like this short loop uh from a couple of years ago um, which i made in boss cassie oil which had like the basic melody idea and stuff i think it's specifically this this kind of snippet if you were to extract it now from the song uh, it would be this uh, snippet, so basically the second part uh, of the uh, main vamp. Um, and I really liked that and I adopted it. I, I threw out some stuff from the Bosca Oil adoption, but actually I kept most of the quote-unquote weird drums, which are here in drum noises. Um, and yeah, I, I really made use of the export to MIDI feature uh, uh, in this one because I not only exported MIDI from Bosca CL into Ableton but I also re-exported this MIDI, all of this um, back out and imported it into Femi Studio because there is actually an NES version of this uh, you can see the like uh, the tracks uh, ex rendered from Femi Studio into here um, which is really nice I'm not going to go over like the, the Femi Studio project because it's basically this except in a Femi Studio version and like a couple of extensions and like distributed all of the chords across different voices and so on. It's nothing special. Um, but yeah, this NES version, if we turn on automation, I might be able to show you. Yeah, right. You can see the crossfade here. Um, it's basically trading hands with the... Um, with the main track, for example, in this section, we briefly hear the NES version and also in the front here. Um, so basically, I exchange from both versions and in the end, the entire last portion is the NES version. Um, and for the reason uh, that I made, for, for this exact reason, I also uh, made the NES version part of the album, so you can listen to the entire NES version if you want to. Um, like the, this last chorus, that's the English term, um, you can listen to that on its own. It's, um, it's, it's the last loop, and I would imagine it's kind of like a boss fight or whatever, that's why it's called Power Advance. It sounds like this a powerful hero's journey rpg song whatever <laughs> so so um yeah um that's sort of the vibe here and that's why the last part is repeated forever you could imagine in a video game it would repeat endlessly so that's power advance let's jump over to a very similar song called a battle this song is very much intentionally an adoption of the Pokemon battle theme format, as you might find it in the first about two generations of Pokemon games. I made this song specifically after watching um, the 8-bit music theory video by the channel 8-bit music theory uh, on Pokemon battle theme traits in gold and silver. I'm copying a lot of stuff directly but actually it's not super hard to get this kind of sound. If you watch that video you need uh, to put things into Phrygian, you need to have a special kind of um, bass line which I have and you also um, need to have a very atonal intro which I have. Um, and the entire song is very much kept in a way that would work on these old um, 
uh, video game consoles a, a little bit more advanced but but not much um, but I also actually created an, an NES version um, much shorter than for Power Advance I just did the uh, main loop whatever you want to call it um, so you can listen to that on at the very end of the song and uh, I also have the separate um, the entire NES van which is like 10 seconds not much uh, on the album is, uh, itself so yeah I, I really like how this turned out I could use some fancier synths but I also like the kind of basic sound that I'm going um, for uh, there I, th I think it's a lot of fun a battle ends the sort of video gamey section uh, of the album and we're getting back to um, lo-fi basically the entire rest of the album apart from like the special songs which i'll also talk about in a minute um, is lo-fi or vaporwave or that that kind of um, chilled relaxed extremely slow kind of music um, so this is Lo-Fi C++. You will definitely know this song from my video on Do I Like C++. I wrote it specifically for this and you can see some um, recordings of me playing the actual uh, MIDI uh, in that video. Um, it, it's actually properly the live thing so I didn't m mime it or whatever. I actually um, recorded myself recording uh, the music so that's it's that's not a fake or whatever um yeah so this is pretty basic it's a bit more complicated um than late, late night campus um has some more things it's like some beeps and boops and some klingalings and some stuff during the entire track to keep it interesting and then most of my stuff it just kind of fades out slowly with instruments dropping out or that's like how lo-fi usually goes so another not really lo-fi but but very very chill very repetitive song that i have is linear predictive piano the next one um the name linear predictive piano <laughs> might already clue you into what this is about or, or where this comes from um it's actually the soundtrack so to speak to the second um flag explained video um or maybe even the third so at the time of recording i haven't um, done the third video yet so i don't know if i will use it or not i'll probably do that um, you <laughs> might find out in the future um, so yeah this was intended to be similar in style to this kind of relaxed uh, piano background music that three blue one brown sometimes has um, on his channel um, so i did piano of course i actually i think i i just um played that manually i don't think it's even quantized it doesn't look very quantized some some extra voices i really like how the voices are kind of doing a bit of counterpoint and then of course in the background there's some some quiet um pad um here the song is actually pretty long but i'm not using much of it that's mostly because it's so slow um so again it's nothing fancy it doesn't even have percussion it doesn't even have bass um but i really liked it and i thought it could go on the album it fits very nicely among all the other lo-fi tracks for mandelbrot Seption, which is the 11th track i unfortunately don't have a project to quickly give you an overview because I created that song and um, I didn't have an Ableton license at the time. It was like before I bought my proper license and after my free license ran out. Um, so I had to record the track um, through Audacity or whatever with playback and had to throw away um, the file after saving. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's not really terrible because it was just some synth maybe it would have been nice to save the synth but it was just some ambient drone synth and i was basically just recording myself uh, switching between some chords um some very wide open chords um i had a lot of fun there and it was just this self-contained thing 
And I also specifically created it as background music for this metal broth drawing video where I was running a metal broth drawing program inside of my programming language SOF inside of uh, Serenity OS on the JVM in Serenity OS, which is a lot of <laughs> um, uh, like nested levels of uh, I did this myself. Um, that's why the song is called the Metal Broadception, or I think the video is also called Metal Broadception. I'll link it below. Um, so that's where that song comes in. I don't think it's anything special. That's also why it belongs on the very end. The twelfth song is the first version of This Is A Test. So This Is A Test was created in September of 2021. Um, and I then let it lay around for a couple of months. And when I got back into making music with a proper license, I mixed uh, This Is A Test again a bit better this time I think so the original mix is this uh, 12th song because I think it it's better in some ways it's mostly not better but it's maybe the version you've heard on like discord or whatever if you were around at that point um, so I just wanted to uh, share it the 13th and 14th song I've already talked about those are the NES versions of power advance and a battle respectively and finally, we have Signs and Did You Know. Those two kind of but not really belong together. So the thing is, um, I played in a band recently and we um, did a live performance of some uh, very nice songs, which you can make the guess of which songs those are. There are there is a recording of those songs, actually multi-track recording you might be able to see here, uh, we have recorded piano, bass, guitar, and drums separately. So I played the drums here. So if you're listening to those songs, those are actually my drums. You can <laughs> judge my drumming. Um, and there's uh, a couple more of um, like environment microphones, like in the recording hall, uh, in, in the performance hall, whatever you want to call it, stage, um, where we uh, performed apart from like mixing those songs properly. I thought some of them actually worked very nicely if you slowed them down to like 60% or 70% um, in, in true vaporwave fashion. So I just did that. Um, the songs are all heavily edited. You can see that from all of the cuts. And also I took some of the like just pure, um, no vocals, but like pure um, band parts and like looped those a couple of times. Um, I wanted to kind of really emulate the um, sound of uh, Floral Shop and like the, the Wavewave Anthem, whatever that song is called and, and whatever the song that it's sampling from is called because it's, it's, it's looping stuff just a ton and even in the end it's looping, I think just, just one beat or whatever for 10, 20 seconds, <laughs> which is... <laughs> quite interesting uh i wouldn't have come up with that idea if macintosh plus hadn't done it before me anyways um so that's something i did so i i took this thing i rendered it to a new track and then slowed that new rendering down here down and put on some uh, echo and stuff some reverb um, I also did that for the second song. Uh, in the second song, I actually only took the solo part because I really, really like the solo. Uh, so the guitarist is, is playing a solo here and they were just absolutely amazing. I think it was like the best solo that they ever did of this specific part. Um, so I wanted to put that in. Um, and again, I slowed this down, not by that much. Uh, but still some and I think it just works very well as a generic lo-fi thing and that's also why both of those have vinyl effects on them and also this second one is absolutely drowned in reverb so those songs have very little effort apart from of course me performing all of those songs um, which originally the idea wasn't to create uh, this vaporwave or lo-fi stuff but I did anyways um, so the effort was really low, just taking the recording, slicing it up, 
um, some basic effects that I had mostly done anyways already. That is both of the last two songs on the album. Uh, I put them last because they're even more chill, I think, than the lo-fi stuff. So I wanted them to to end the album with, also because they're low effort and some people might not be listening anymore. So that's also why, of course, the important songs, the big ones, the ones I really like, are in the beginning. That's all I have for the album. You can listen to it uh, on YouTube at the moment. I might see if I can upload it to SoundCloud or whatever because my storage is running out. And maybe I'll even create a Spotify thing at some point. By the way, you can definitely listen to it on YouTube. I'll link the video. Um, and I hope you have fun listening to my first album. Peace, love and genderqueerness. Mm-hmm.